Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and today we're going to take a look at a handful of salvage exotic cards that were not only purchased at the salvage auction, they're being resold at the salvage auction by a third party, and these resellers are standing to make tens of thousands of dollars per flip. I personally find this fascinating and think it's a very interesting niche industry to be in, and I want to show you guys exactly what they're doing and how much they stand to make on a few of these flips. And the first one here is this 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus. Now this is a car that's been featured on this channel and a few other videos. You guys that watch most of my videos have likely already seen this one, but I want to show you its latest auction data. It's absolutely incredible. This right here is actually its original sale page. It was for sale by CSAA, which is an insurance company, and its primary damage was vandalism. I'll go through the photos really quick. We won't spend a lot of time on this because you guys have likely seen it. But in the photos, we can see that somebody spray painted along the side of it here. And just in various different photos, there's damage all over, specifically the interior right here. There's spray paint and looks like somebody took a knife and cut the dashboard, cut the leather seats, really did a number inside and out of this car. Here's the digital dash completely smashed in. And here's what looks like two key marks on the side of the carbon fiber near the gas door here. So this car has been thoroughly vandalized and its first sale, which I followed very closely here at Copart because you guys likely know I've been looking for an Audi R8, sold for right around $72,000. So this car in this condition, $72,000. Now let's take a look at its latest listing. This car was obviously bought from that original listing. Now it's being resold again here on Copart, but by a third party, no longer an insurance company. One of the big differences between this listing and the last is that the car is now classified as a run and drive. The resellers obviously figured that issue out, but it still shows the primary damage as vandalism. And if we go through the photos here, at first glance, we're not going to really notice anything major. That spray painted line that was down the side is gone. But if we keep going through, the interior is pretty much the same without the spray paint. We see all the cuts on the dashboard. We see the cuts on the leather seats. It's still in pretty gnarly shape. But the car does run and drive now. And it's being offered just cleaned up from this third party. We don't know what the mileage is because that digital dash was smashed in like you saw. The current bid is already at $97,000 and it's going to be auctioned off later today, which will likely be sometime in the past by the time you're watching this video. But of course, I'll link all of the links I'm showing you today in the description box below. So we got a car that sold originally right around $72,000. The bid is at $97,000. The seller's reserve is not even met yet. This person stands to make well over $20,000 on this flip. And I say that because I don't see any major parts that they purchased. Now, maybe they did purchase some major mechanical parts. We know that on an Audi R8 like this, the parts are going to be fairly expensive. But I would still guesstimate that the profit on this car is going to be in the $20,000 plus dollar range. Now, let's hop right over to the car that I've been wanting to show you guys. This is a car that has been on my radar a long time. A car that I actually bid on and was around during the live auction. This is a 2013 McLaren MP4-12C, likely the worst name McLaren in the history of McLarens, but still an amazing car nonetheless. I want to jump right into these photos. This car holds a salvage title, but looking at it, you'd have absolutely no clue why. Everything looks perfect, no airbags deployed in the interior. The only thing we could tell from these photos is a little bit of dust and dirt kind of everywhere. Now, it does have higher mileage for this year McLaren, close to 30,000 miles. And this right here, this undercarriage shot, is a strange photo to be provided by Copart. When I see something strange, it's kind of the thing that I want to focus on. But still, this looks pretty typical for the undercarriage of a car, so we're going to keep going. And that is it. Now, let's go and check out these details. This car has a Colorado salvage title, again, close to 30,000 miles. It is a run and drive but its primary damage is burn damage. And usually when a car catches on fire, it's pretty obvious. So the first thing that I did was of course, Google the VIN number and through a handful of research besides just Googling this VIN number and finding the original sale listing here at South Lake Motor Cars, I found out that this car was indeed being offered 
by the insurance company. So there's no reselling going on here. There's nothing that somebody might have doctored up. This car is straight from whatever burn damage occurred. The next thing I did was hop on Google and type in MP4-12C fire to see if this was something that consistently happened to MP4-12Cs. And the first thing that popped up was this right here. And this is where things get super interesting. My 12C caught on fire today. So, well, look, someone else had this issue. I go and check out this form page, which again, I'll link in the description box below. And the original poster going by the name O Exotic tells you how they were driving their car. They got out with a friend. They smelled a little bit of burning. They looked underneath. They saw a little flame coming out of what seemed to be a vent tube. And they luckily had a fire extinguisher, put it out. They said the car had no check engine lights. The car still ran and drove, no problem. There were no issues, but the owner had the car towed to his mechanic just to be safe. Now, without going into every single post here and just focusing on the post from the original owner, they posted right here a tube. And I'm assuming that tube is this piece right here where they said there was fire spewing out of, but the flame was very small. You continue to read through this thread and basically this car was brought to his independent mechanic which said that it looks like it was coming from around the gas tank on a mclaren we've got what looks to be like a stainless steel gas tank right here underneath the car we see a little char mark right here if we look real close but other than that no major damage to this car now, the last post in this thread by O Exotic was in October 2017. It basically just says that the car has been moved from his independent mechanic to the dealership. They're working very hard on figuring out what caused this fire. And then it goes silent. There's no update from him. But what I did is one step further and I clicked on O Exotic's profile. And I went and looked to see if by any chance, because he mentions in that thread that his car was a higher mileage than usual McLaren. And like I said, that's one of the first things I noticed looking at that listing was that it had almost 30,000 miles on it. I went and looked at some of his previous posts and here you go. It's a white McLaren and it happens to have those same exact wheels and it's got those higher miles. And if you continue looking through this guy's profile, you'll see that the seat colors match and everything. This is the same car a car with no check engine lights a car with no major burn damage according to this poster a car that literally caught on fire for what seems to be a few seconds put out not doing any serious damage to the car completely totaled it out and that is one of the most fascinating cars i've come across in a long time i watched this auction like a hawk because i knew it was an opportunity to have an mp4 12c for a fraction of what one would cost now at a dealership. These cars trade hands between $115,000 and about $130,000. Now the day came for the auction on this car. I put in a preliminary bid and figured I wasn't even gonna come close. And well, here's a short clip from the auction. And now the McLaren. So yeah, I lost the bid right off the bat. My bid was one of those initial ones and that was it. Now, a few weeks later, somebody texted me the link to this eBay listing. And so I opened it up. I took a good look at these photos. I immediately saw this right here, 28,435 miles. I saw the wheels. I saw the interior, that carbon fiber leather with the same orange piping. I said, this is exactly the same car. Car that sold, let's roughly say $70,000 all in. It was now being sold for $95,000. Now, in the description, it doesn't really say anything about the fire. I would hope that the seller would be disclosing that it had that issue. What's interesting is that they actually relisted this car. And it's no longer $95,000. It's now at $105,000, our best offer. But we likely know right around what the person's willing to accept for it. So a car that sold for $70,000 now being offered at $105,000. Even if they don't sell for that $105,000, they stand to make a lot of money on this car and I think they should. This is one of those snags that you can find at the salvage auction if you keep your eyes open, you do enough research, 
and find out exactly what you're looking at, exactly what you're bidding on, and especially when it comes to the exotics, there are a lot of amazing stories out there. The last car we're gonna look at today is a 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. Now this car is similar to Tavares's. Uh, I think his is an 08 or 09, and his is also a Spider. The big difference being that his has a manual transmission, while well, this one has an e-gear. His car was also originally offered for sale at Copart, but this listing right here is actually not this vehicle's original listing, and its original listing was not at Copart. It was over at IAA, where I've obtained the photos. I'm going to show them to you right now. Now, these are the original photos of this Gallardo Spider being offered at the insurance auto auction. I always like to show you the original photos before we jump into the latest photos because usually the later the photo is the better the car looks and it's always good to know kind of what the damage originally looked like so when we go through these photos the front end and sides of the car look pretty good it's when we get to the rear that this thing definitely has a major issue now to the keen eye we'll see that things do not look totally factory here in the back end of the car but it's not super noticeable here at the insurance auto auction they clearly weren't going for that we see that there's quarter panel damage on either side that bumper is hanging the cover for the engine and the convertible top is all disoriented it looks terrible but otherwise it's damage that definitely could be repairable it just doesn't look ideal the interior is kind of that drab gray and black color not my favorite Lamborghini interior but cleaned up I'm sure it will be real nice and here's another angle showing that bumper that's just completely hanging on the passenger side 28,000 mile car now hopping back over to the Copart listing we've got a car that looks very similar in the front we see the bumper already completely off the car on the side and personally I think that that makes the car look better. Look, we just have the bumper to the side. It's not hanging anymore. It doesn't look completely like it's broken. It just looks like someone took the rear bumper off the car. And even the engine cover is back and it's aligned pretty darn well. You could tell it's not sitting down flush into the area it needs to be in, but it's a lot less noticeable than it was before. But what is much more noticeable than before is all of this crazy stuff going on in the engine compartment. This car has a twin turbo setup. And not any twin turbo setup. This is an underground racing stage three kit. But this kit that is installed in this car, which is specifically highlighted here in the last photo, is very, very costly. Now we know that this is an underground racing stage three kit because if we go down to the notes in the description section of this Copar listing, it says underground racing stage three package. If we go to Underground Racing's website, I'm going to show you exactly how much a Stage 3 kit is. Right here, a 1,000 wheel horsepower on 93 octane or 1,250 on race fuel. This kit on 2004 to 2008 models, which we're looking at, is $89,000 installed. Now, I've been following this Lamborghini since I originally saw it at IAA and now moving over here to Copart. And I really think... There's a minuscule difference in the amount of work here. Sure, they got that rear way better than it was before. That rear bumper just completely sitting there. Anytime I see an auction with a bumper set off to the side, it just looks better, it looks cleaner. We can see that there's no major structural damage here in the rear end of the car. It gives you more confidence than a bumper hanging there. This is something that in photos looks 100% better even though not a whole lot of additional work, in my opinion, was done. And this car originally only sold for $62,000. Oh, by the way, I think this is a wrong picture here. I think this is a picture meant for another car. So $62,000 for this Lamborghini with a $90,000 turbo kit in it. Now, we all know that aftermarket modifications don't add that much value when we're talking about reselling a car. But I venture to tell you that there's a ton of profit margin left in this car and I'll be excited to see how much it sells for. And guys, this is something for you all to think about. These are exotic cars that are selling for tens of thousands of dollars more. 
with a little bit of added work, whether it be cosmetic or mechanical, and substantially better marketing. And by marketing, I basically mean better photos. And there's a real niche market to be tapped into here. So hey, maybe you find something unique like one of the cars I showed you today. Please let me know about it. My email is samcrackauto at gmail.com. You can also find that in the description box below. Any questions, as always, feel free to send them there as well. If you found this video interesting, I always appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, be sure to check out my Instagram where I've been posting some behind-the-scenes pictures. As soon as I take them, stuff that a lot of times when I'm working on a video you won't see for a few days, go up on Instagram now. So definitely be sure to check that out, description box below. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching, and I'll catch you very soon.